Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're called to rejoice and be glad in it. I was excited when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you are excited about being in the presence of the Lord, both virtually and in person, I dare you to give the Lord your very best praise. Thank you for another day. We are celebrating our mothers on this day. And so to God be the glory for all the mothers and those that have participated in the lives of our community and function as a mothers to you. We say happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Even as we are beginning our worship experience, I dare you to uh, like, share, and repost. I invite you to stay connected with Encouragement Temple. But most importantly, I dare you to give the Lord all of your worship. Feel free to worship in this space as we love on the Lord our God. Now, as we begin to move forward. I ask that you would share with me in a brief moment of prayer. Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, it was you alone who established the foundations of the world. Father, from the beginning to the end and from the end to the beginning, you are great and greatly to be praised. Your word reminds us from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. You are worthy to be praised. And Father, today we come to you as your sons and as your daughters. Oh God, saying that you be glorified, you be magnified, you be honored, you be revered, oh God, because you are the Holy One of Israel. You are the King of all kings. Now, oh God, will you inhabit the praises of your people? Lord, I pray that you will receive our worship, that we will focus on you, keeping our eyes on the cross. Not worried about who's here or who's watching, but knowing that we serve you an audience of one. And Father, we know that you are worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. We thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we love you today and forevermore. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Again, we welcome you to Encouragement Temple as we move to worship the Lord our God. We invite you to clap your hands when you feel like clapping. Tap your feet when the music gets good to you. Sing along with us even as we worship the Lord our God. I pray even now that you would join us as we're led in song by our music ministry team. And we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to sing along with her. And so we ask that you would praise the Lord with us even as we join her in song on today. Will you receive us as we worship our God?
done for me. Hey, Donnie, hey, on Calvary. Hey, down on the third day. And people don't know, but you got to go what the scriptures say. He does great things. He's a mighty king. And everybody don't know, but he does great things. I thank the Lord for all that he's done for me because he's worthy of the victory. Sing. Oh, 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 Lord. We praise you. Oh. this Mother's Day. Psalm 27. This is how it reads. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Mm. The war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. Yes. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above mine enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. Yes. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O oh Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, O oh Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. O oh God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. That is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. You can be seated in his presence.
make a way. How many of you have really experienced him making a way in your life? When the Lord steps in, he shows out. And he's faithful to his word. to this way-making God. And so right now we invite you to take a posture of prayer whereby you're able to talk to this God in faith, knowing that indeed as he hears us, he also answers. So for those of you that are here, you're more than welcome to stand or kneel at your seat. For our virtual viewers, we ask that you would uh, take a posture of prayer as well along with us as we Go to the presence of the Lord, knowing that he said that we can go to his throne boldly. Because that is where we may obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. If you have a prayer request, please submit those in the comments field so that we can include you during the week as we are going to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray together. Oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, we thank you for this day, oh God. And we come to you with humble hearts and bow down heads, Father, because we know that you are a holy king. Father, we know that without you, we cannot breathe, we can't think, we can't reason, we can't move, oh God, without you. And so, Father, before we think of asking you for anything, oh God, we want to thank you for who you are, and thank you for everything, Father. Thank you that you are the bright and morning star, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Father, we thank you that you are our friend that sticketh closer than any brother. We thank you that you continue to show us your smile and to lavish us with your grace and your mercies every morning. Father, thank you that we experience new mercies every morning. Oh God, to suit us for today. Father, we thank you for the clear blue skies and the birds that we hear, the sun and the sky, the trees that give us clean air. Father, we thank you for our family and our friends, our jobs. We thank you, oh God, for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Father, for a reasonable portion of health. We thank you, Father, for resources and connections. We thank you, oh God, for peace in our minds and joy in our hearts. We thank you, God, because we know that if it had not been, for the Lord who was on our side, we would know where we would be, oh God. Yes, yes. Father, we thank you that you kept us when we wanted to end it all. Father, we thank you that when we didn't know who to turn to or where to go when our family and our friends didn't want to give us a time of day, Father, that you stood with your arms wide open and said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden and burdened, and I shall give you rest. Father, we thank you that you never get tired of hearing from us. But you encourage us, oh God, to lay at your feet, to cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. Father, we thank you that you're just that type of God. Father, we thank you that you are the God that never slumbers nor sleeps. You have an aerial view of all the things that go on in our lives, Father. And because you are an omniscient God, an omnipresent God, an omnipotent God, you are already working everything out for our good and for your glory. Father, we already know, God, that nothing shall be called impossible with you. If we but have the faith the size of a mustard seed, your word declares that we shall be able to speak to the mountain and the mountain shall be moved. Father, we thank you that you've given us the power Oh, God, to work, oh, God, and to will according to what you have designed for us. Lord God, we come to you even as we're acknowledging you and loving you for all that you've done. Father, the reality is that even with your new mercies, even with the grace and the unconditional love that you show us every day, even with your faithfulness when we are faithless, Father, that you love us with an everlasting love. And even with that, knowing that, being a recipient of that, we still mess up. So, Father, as your sons and as your daughters, we are just asking that you will forgive us for all of our faults, all of our wrongs, oh God. The 
blanket promises that we make to you that we will never do it again. Say we will not mess up like that again. But yet and still, we keep doing it over and over and over. We make promises that we won't talk to our children, talk to our colleagues, talk to our community partners, talk to our spouses in manners that manners that are disrespectful and un, uh, unshowing of your love. But yet and still, we see it on the news. We hear it in communications with one another and gossip. So God, we hear that it's still happening. Lord, we pray that you would set a guard over our mouth and keep watch over the doors of our lips. Father, that we will speak life and to those that are in our circles, that we will speak life and to our children daily, that we will speak life and to our spouses and to our siblings and to our mothers and fathers, that we will speak life. Because we know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So, Father, help us to be life givers. Forgive us, oh God, that we don't always spend time with you like we ought to. We have time for every and anything else to go to sports events and concerts and clubs and doing whatever we want to do. But then we're always too tired to talk to you. But you are the one who moves mountains. You are the one that makes waves. You are the one who works miracles. You are the one that keeps loving on us. Father, help us not to take you for granted. Forgive us, God. And even with that, help us to forgive others. Because someone under the sound of my voice has yet to forgive someone else. They keep harboring onto the bitterness, oh God, of the hurt, the pain. But your word reminds us that if we don't forgive others, we can't dare expect you to forgive us. That's your word, oh God, and you're faithful to your word. So, Father, help us as we are seeking to represent and represent you to the world. Help us to forgive even as you have forgiven. To be willing to give second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, infinite chances. Because that is what you do for us, God. And we say thank you, Father. Forgive us for lying and cheating, stealing. Forgive us for being prideful. Forgive us for our arrogance and our conceitedness. Forgive us for not caring enough for the homeless. For simply driving right past them. Forgive us, God. For you remind us that they will always be among us. And we have to be careful how we treat one another because we could be entertaining angels on the way. So, Father, help us not to be so focused on me, myself, and I but to consider others. Help us not to be those that seek to be served, but to serve. Because we're reminded that a servant is not greater than his master. And oh God, you alone, you came to serve. So Father, we thank you for forgiving us for our sins and even those things that we struggle with, those strongholds that we struggle with, that we dare not tell the pastor, the preacher, our fellow Christian disciples, our fellow believers. But we struggle with them on the inside. But because you know, Father, we pray that you remove those desires, those things that we struggle with. Remove them. That we will become more like you, Father. Every day we want to say, oh God, that you are the potter. We are the clay. Make us and mold us, oh God. Have your way. Whatever you decide to do, oh God, it's fine with us. And whatever you decide to do, oh God, don't do it without us, oh God. Use us as your children, as you see fit, oh God. Now, Father, as we're yielding ourselves to you, as we are availing ourselves to you, as we are emptying out ourselves of this world and the influences, oh God, we ask that you would pour into us your Holy Spirit. Fill us afresh unto the overflow, oh God. That we will have your Holy Spirit, your word within us, oh God. That we will flow like rivers of living water. 
Father, we thank you. Even now that you are already working in us. That your hand is on each and every one of us. We thank you, God, that eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that you have in store for us. And Father, we trust and know that there's no good thing that you will withhold from those that walk uprightly before you. So Father, help us to walk uprightly before you. Not discouraged, not dismayed, not full of pride and arrogance, but humbly before you. Help us to be as wise as serpents and as humble as doves, oh God, as we are moving throughout this world. Father, as we are asking and seeking you for your help, as we are yielding our will to your will, Father, the reality is also that many of us are needing you more than just for wisdom and for creature comfort. Someone, oh God, needs a healing in their very soul, the mental anguish that has ravished their lives, that has taken a hold that they begin to feel that you don't care about them. That you don't see them. That you don't know what they're going through. Father, we pray according to your will and in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. Father, that you will, oh God, infuse them with your Holy Spirit that they will have the joy of salvation upon them. That you will allow them to be covered from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, oh God. That they will have Jesus' joy. They will know that this joy that they have, the world didn't give it, so the world can't take it away. Help them to hold on to you. Knowing that they have no reason to fear. Because you have not given us a spirit of fear of love, power, and of a sound mind. Father, help them not to take thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow has its own worries. Not to worry about how the bills are going to get paid, what they're going to wear, what relationships are going to be mended, how they're going to eat, what's going to happen on their job, what's going to happen with their children. Help them not to worry about tomorrow, but give us this day our daily bread. Father, you are the Jehovah Jireh, the one that provides. So, Father, we thank you. Even as we're asking for your healing in our minds and our will and emotions. God, that you will continue to provide that daily bread. That which will sustain us. That you will renew our minds. That we would not be fully conformed to this world. That we'll be constantly transformed. That when we look in the mirror, when others see you, they see, when others see us, they see you. And we're able to have the testimony that I know a man from Galilee. Father, I pray that as you are healing, those that are dealing with mental anguish and depression, low self-esteem, schizophrenia, and bipolar. Their minds are playing tricks on them. Not just outside of the church, but even in the church. Father, we pray that you would give them your peace, your shalom, your wholeness. That they will feel it through and through, oh God. Not just today, but every day. Father, I pray that you will be with those that are in hospital bed wounds. All across the city of Houston, the state of Texas, this United States of America. Oh God, I pray that you will heal across this nation. Father, that you will be with those children that are suffering from cancer and bone disease, oh God. That you will continue to give them life and strength to fight. Father, we pray that you will be in the neonatal units where the premature babies are being born daily. Where they are struggling and fighting for life. Father, I pray that you will work a miracle, God. We pray 
pray, oh God, for full development in the name of Jesus. We pray for those mothers that feel helpless on this Mother's Day, not able to help their babies. Father, we pray that you would strengthen them in their innermost being, oh God. Father, and even as we are talking about Mother's Day, I pray, oh God, that you would be with those that have lost their mothers. Father, the reality is that so many have experienced bereavement. And to lose a mother, oh God, is one of the toughest things to bear and overcome. Father, so we pray for those individuals who have lost mothers and mother figures. Father, we pray that you will continue to remind them that you are there, oh God, that you are the one who is able to fill them with your love and that you don't make mistakes. Father, we pray that you would fill them with the hope for tomorrow, that they would not grieve as those that have no hope, but to know that those that die in you shall also rise. So, Father, we thank you for healing the broken heart, for helping that young child to move forward, even with the loss, for helping that young son to move forward in spite of the loss, to help those adult children to move forward, not forgetting the gift of mothers, but to knowing who holds the future. Father, we pray that you will be with those mothers even now who have lost children. And for some reason, their worth of being a mother has waned. God, we pray that you would encourage their hearts today. That you will fill them again with your love. Lord God, we pray that you will soothe their doubts, calm their fears. Oh God, that you will continue to wipe the tears away from their eyes. That you will give them a boldness, a confidence in you. Lord God, we pray that you will be with those that are suffering with unemployment even right now. Lord God, that you will provide gainful employment for some man, some woman, some teenager that is trying to help their mother take care of the family. Father, we pray for gainful employment and we pray, oh God, for restoration of families where sons and mothers have divided, where mothers and daughters have divided where relationships have been broken, God. You are the restorer. So, Father, restore today. Mend today. Get the glory today. Now, Father, as we prepare to close this prayer, Father, we dare not without asking, oh God, that you would cover the man that will preach the gospel on today. Lord, we pray for a fresh wind from your heart to his heart that he will hear clearly from your lips. It will not be about what he studied. It will not be about what he prepared. But it will be all about what you will have for him to say. Father, do a new thing today according to your will and your word. Father, we thank you for Pastor E.D. Reed. And we thank you for every church that is open and assembled in your name. God, we ask and we thank you even now for Jesus Christ. Because it is in him that we are able to have access to you. And you said if we ask according to your will and in his name, that it will be granted according to your will, Father. So we ask in the powerful name of Jesus, the only risen Savior. The one who was, who is, and who is to come. The one who is the bright and morning star. 
who is our Savior, the precious Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. It's in that name that we pray and ask it all, and we thank you in victory because you hear us and you are already answering. It's in that name that we pray and ask it all. Amen.
We exalt the Lord because he's worthy to be exalted on this Sunday. Exodus, the second chapter. And we'll look at verses 1 through 9. We'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Word of God. Exodus. If we have a problem finding Exodus, I suggest you come to Bible study. It's the second book of the Bible. Exodus, the second chapter. Put in a plug for Bible study. Second chapter, verses 1 through 9. If you have it, say, I got it. I got it. If you need more time, say, hold up. Amen. Thank you all for standing for the reading of God's word. The word of the Lord reads as follows. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of, bull, of bulrushes for him, dabbed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the weeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. And her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby well. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women? that she may nurse the child for you. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me. And I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his words. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Man, on this Mother's Day, we want to preach on the topic real love. Real love. You taught me everything. Everything you've given me, I'll always keep inside. You were there for me to love and care for me. When skies were gray, whenever I was down, you was always there to comfort me. Even though I was not a big fan of boys to men, those are the lyrics of the song that they pen called Song for Mama. They began to think about, as a young child, all the things that they mom 
mothers had done for them. And the reality is that we don't appreciate what they've done to us or for us until we get older. You all know, we, we all know when we are children, we don't like to get whoopings. At that moment, we think that our parents are the worst things on earth. At that moment, we don't want to eat green vegetables and Brussels sprouts and broccoli and, and, and okra. We don't want to eat that. Thing. At that moment, we think our parents don't know how to cook. We think that they don't know our taste buds. As children, as teenagers, we, we don't understand and didn't like when they told us to be home when the lights, when the, the street lights come on. We didn't like it at that particular time. We see all our friends out hanging out, but I had to be home by 8 o'clock on a Saturday night. I didn't understand that. Personally, I didn't understand why all my friends got to party on New Year's Eve only for my mom to pull up and tell me I had to go to church in front of everybody. I, I didn't understand it. I thought something was wrong with her. I thought she was the meanest individual in this world. But just like boys to men, they penned this song as they were adults, after they had children. Some of us, now that we are grown with our children, with grandchildren now, we can appreciate them because even though we looked at the times that we didn't like, the reality is when people talked about us, when they thought we weren't going to be nothing in life, when people was really willing and ready to give up on us. Our, our mother stood by. Fathers was absentee, but the mother stood strong and took care of us. And boys and men said, Mama, now that I'm older, I understand and appreciate everything that you did. And what they said in the song basically was, Mom, you sacrificed for me. You sacrificed a great living just to make sure I was good. You sacrificed uh, you being able to do your own thing to make sure I was able to grow and understand and know what real love was. No, I didn't understand it as a child, but now that we are men and women, we appreciate the example that we have for real love from a real mother. It's not the first time we witnessed a mother to sacrifice it all for our children. We looked into our text. We are informed at the beginning of Exodus that Joseph had died. Not only did Joseph die, but all his brothers died. If you know Joseph, Joseph was the one who was sold into slavery by his brothers only for 15 years later to be second in command in the land of Egypt. He informed the Pharaoh that there would be a famine and he puts Joseph in front of all, uh, over all his affairs, and now since Joseph is basically running the kingdom, we're informed that his brothers, what they did, they went through the drought, they went through the famine, only to realize that when they came for assistance, they were talking to their brothers. To just fast forward, he allowed his brothers to live within the kingdom, and now 400 years later, Joseph has died, his brothers have died, and now they're their family lineage, their, their, their offsprings has grown to a point, as the text tells us, that now they're able to cover the whole land. But in chapter 1 of Exodus, we're informed that there arose a king of Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph and all that Joseph had done. Does that sound for me today that all the work that us as African Americans have put in this country and now we're having presidents who don't even care about the work that we've done for the country. There arose a president who don't care about the lives of people. But back to our text, he was a pharaoh. He, wrote, he noticed that these Hebrews, these people who don't look like me, is growing so much so that they will outnumber us. And if they outnumber us and decide to rebel against us, they can take over the kingdom. And so he begins to make a decree and says, you know what? If there's a Hebrew boy born amongst these Hebrew women, destroy them. We thought that black boys and girls were starting to die today. It was happening back then. And we see the same things now that genocide of, an, of a group of people was taking place, but the midwives feared God. 
So these men wives, even though the king had told them to kill these black boys, they understood that we'd rather obey God than man. And so they decide we're not going to kill these African-American boys, these Hebrew boys. We're going to allow them to live because we serve a God who's greater than the commandments of man. And so Pharaoh sees that these individuals they're yet growing, they're yet coming y'all know like babies, kids they don't die, they multiply and he asks them, what have you done? I told you to kill these kids. Yeah. Ben Wives says, no, these, these women, these Hebrew women are stronger yeah. than any other woman. And I'm grateful because these Hebrew women that raised us are stronger than average women. No, most women, it's hard for them to raise a child by themselves. Most women would just throw in the towel. But because we are made with something different, you say, yes, I'm by myself, but through God, I'm going to raise these kids all by myself. Yep. Yep. And so Pharaoh decides to make another decree. He says, you know what, since I'm not getting no participation from these midwives. What's going to happen is we're going to make sure that they throw their children in the river themselves once they give birth. And so now we're here in chapter 2. We're informed her name is not given, but her name is given in Exodus chapter 6. Her name is Jacobin. We're informed that Jacobin gives birth to the baby Moses. His name wasn't Moses at this particular time, but she gives birth to this child. And now she's at a crossroads. Should she do what the law has told her to do? To throw her son in the river and die? Because that was the ordinance given by the king? Or should she stand firm and say, you know what? I understand that there was a, a, a law that was given by society, but God has blessed me with this. Yeah. What would you do when you're caught at a crossroad? When you have to make a decision, should I do what the law tells me to do? Or do, should I do what I know that is right? We see in our text that John Ben decides to do what was right. She decides to raise her children. She decided not to throw her child into a river. Some of us, we cannot give up on our children because society tells us that they won't mount up to be nothing because society tells them because you growing up in the hood is nothing mount up out of the hood just because you're off a homestead, fifth ward, acres home. We should not give up on our children. So, Know how the story goes, she gives birth and Moses becomes this great savior of the children of Israel out of the hand of Egypt. But as we look through the text, we see three things that shows us that Jacob was a real woman, that Jacob was a person who really loves her child. And the first thing that we gather from the text is that she knows when and how to protect her children from danger. She knows when and how to protect her children from danger. The Bible says that when she gave birth, she looks at this child and she realizes that the child was beautiful. Stop right there because we have to, when we look at our children, even though I know sometimes they can work our nerves, Sometimes we, you know, we don't like some of the things that they do. We need to understand and realize that they are a gift from the Lord. As a matter of fact, Psalm 121 3 tells us that children are a heritage from the Lord. And if they are a heritage from the Lord, then we need to view them as something more than just little children, something more than just a, 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 a bill or a responsibility. They are an heritage. From the Lord and for the woman, he says that the fruit of thy womb is your reward. All right. yeah. Basically, we need to take joy because God has allowed you to be in a position that others wish yeah, they could be in. You, we neglect our children, but you have people who wish they could have kids. You don't raise your child right, but you got people that wish they would play. 
We don't like some decisions they make as they get older. Yes, we don't like going to the school for dealing with the teachers. No, we don't like when they're disobedient. We don't like when they don't listen to us. We don't like it, but the reality is that they are a blessing from God, and secondly, they didn't ask to be here. No, this one going to get any amens. Children didn't ask to be here. I can see if they asked to be here, and then you were like, no, boy, I don't want you. But you put yourself in the position to have children. God bless you and allow you to have children. And so now, instead of viewing them as a burden, we need to view them as a blessing. Because at the end of the day, the Lord allows you to experience a thing called parenthood. And so you don't get that blessing of a phone call when the child says every day and then, every blue moon, mama, I thank you for what you've done. Not if you didn't do what you were supposed to do. So there are so many people that would love to be in your position. Now watch this. She knew that Pharaoh made this decree to kill these boys. She made, made the decree that he didn't want no boys born amongst the people because they had already outnumbered them. And what Pharaoh understood, I can keep the girls because at the end of the day, it ain't the girl's seed that makes it, but it's the son's seed. And he understood that if I can get rid of the boys, then I can annihilate a, a group of individuals. I can genocide and end the life of a certain race. What's it saying? That's the reason why we, we see on television black boys and brown boys and girls what they're doing and they get killed by the hands of those that's supposed to love and protect us and what's going on in this day and age is it's a naturalized genocide. I didn't come to make this shout in, in prime but I want you to understand the text is that Pharaoh wanted them gone. Society says let's demean them. Let's get rid of them. Let's kill them. Without the last four to five years, we've seen countless of African-American boys killed. A lot of black and, brown, black and brown bodies hung, died for no apparent reason. But at the same time, we as parents have to be able to protect them from that. And so over these times, how do we protect them from this? Well, you teach your children how they should drive when they get pulled over. That's part of the protection piece. You teach them that when they pull you over, have your hands up. You teach them that when they go to stores, don't speak loudly, don't put your hands in their pocket. You teach them how to move that when you're in certain in situations, don't elevate your voice. We teach them that's the parents protecting their children from all harm in danger because the reality is is that John Ben had the responsibility as a mother to protect her children and we have the responsibility to protect our children by all means necessary. To show real love not only does John Ben know when and how to protect her children from danger but secondly she knows when to give them to the Lord. She knows when to give them to the Lord. There'll come a point in time in our lives that we'll be in the same position as Jacob. What you mean? There will come a place and a time in every parent's life that we can no longer hide our children from trials, from tribulations, from what the outside real world has for them. As long as we can, as long as they're adolescent, as long as we have the ability to, what we will do, we will shield them. Then there will become a point of time in their lives where you will have to let them go. But in letting them go, 
doesn't mean you stop praying for them. And let them go doesn't mean they are no longer on your mind. But in letting them go, you're trusting God. And so the Bible tells us that since she was no longer able to hide this baby, the Bible tells us in verse 3 of chapter 2 that she builds an ark. Now what's amazing about this baby ark of this basket is what she builds it with. See, she knew how to build something that was suitable and was sustainable. The Bible says that she built this ark out of bulrushes, asphalt, and pitch. And you're saying, why did they tell us all of that? Well, I'm glad you asked because what that asphalt did was it was an insulation, and not only did it insulate the, the basket, but it also kept it a, a waterproof. Not only did it keep it waterproof, but the pitch, we informed that the pitch was around it to protect the, the basket, inside the basket, from all type of weather. And, and the, the bulrushes, which is the papyrus weed, grew about 16 feet long. And so what she was able to do is she was able to design this, design this basket, this art, in a way that it was hard to detect while the baby was going through swamp waters. What you're saying? What I'm saying is that she made sure that when the baby went out, the baby was well prepared for what he would have to face in this life. And that's the job of a parent is to train the child up. And so when you have to let it go, that they have all the tools they need to be successful. What you mean? We tell them now how to go in and go out. So when they go out, you have enough confidence to know that I've trained the child up in the way that he should go. I taught him everything that he needs. So when he go out in these streets, he'll know how to protect himself. He'll know how to stand. He'll know that when time get tough to call on the name of the Lord. So, the baby, after she builds this, after she puts this art together, after the parent, you teach your children, after they graduate high school and they decide to go, you let them go. The Bible says she put him on a boat and she pushes him in the river. In other words, now this boat is out there in the world. And, and out there in the world, on this river, he can go and face snakes, alligators, eagles, pigeons. He can face everything that can come his way. But again, the mother, in knowing how she built, oh my God, how she built this art, understood that this art can, can be a disguise. This ark is able to withstand any animal that comes from the sea. That this ark will be will be uh, will not be visible to the eagles in the hell. What he's saying, what she's saying is that this person will be so insulated, will be so protected that she had no worries about the baby being in a boat. And that's the word right there is when we raise our children of the Lord in the Lord, we train them up in the way that they should go. That when they go out and they be and then you know that they have everything they're supposed to have. You can stand up with your chest collar and say, I taught my son how to get out there. And he will not embarrass my family name. He will make us proud because he has all the tools to be successful. So, and so this, 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 this asphalt, this asphalt, this basket, this basket is in the river. And this baby is out there. This baby is out there, unable to protect himself, but he's protected. He's unable to protect himself, but he is protected. There are some things that we can't get ourselves out of. There are just some things we are going to have to go through, but even in going through some things, we got to know that we are protected. What should be? Nobody signs up to go through trials. Nobody signs up to go through tribulation. Nobody signs up to deal with sickness and headaches and heartaches and pain. But you just got to know and believe within yourself that if that's what I got to deal with, then I am protected by the Lord. 
Because in that river, issues can come from every angle. Issues can come from every angle. You can go through unemployment, sickness, and lost loved ones all at one time. Think about this. This, this. this basket is out in the river. Nothing will stop any and everything from attacking them at one time. But because it is, because this basket was built the right way, it doesn't matter where the danger come from. It don't matter how much it comes my way. Yes, it's going to affect you. Yes, it's going to rock the boat. But because you've done all that you've done, then when it comes, your child can stand because of what they've seen and what they've been taught. Right. Y'all have almost done with my mother's day speech. Real love. We know when a mother shows and knows real love because she knows how and when to protect her children. She knows when to give them up to the Lord, but finally, she'll be there for their continued maturation. She will be there for their continued maturation. In the text, again, she lets the baby go because there was a decree to kill the Hebrew baby. She let him go and trusting that God will protect the baby, and we're informed in the text that while the baby boat was going, was floating, that his sister by the name of Mary was watching to see where the boat was going. That's always a ram in the bush, no matter what you're going through in life. A ram will always be in the bush. The Bible says that when Pharaoh's daughter, the one who makes this decree, when his daughter goes out to bathe with her maids, she, she notices this, 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 this basket, and she looks and she calls for the basket. Mind you, Moses, the baby sister, is looking for all At this particular time, she is actually works for Pharaoh's daughter. All right. And so the Bible says Pharaoh's daughter gets the basket, opens the basket, and sees the baby crying. And the text tells us that she has compassion for Baby. Mind you, she has compassion for this baby that's crying because this baby was different. How you know the baby? She said, This is a Hebrew child. Oh, this went over here. This child is different. When you raise your children right, people will know that it's something different about them when they look at them, when they speak to them, when they talk to them, what you mean? Because these these kids now, they don't know how to say yes ma'am and no sir. And so when they hear your kids saying yes ma'am and no sir, they gonna look at your child and say something is different about this child. This child is telling me yes ma'am. This child is telling me no sir. You have real parents in your life. Says there's something different about this Hebrew baby. So soon as she says that, the text tells us that Miriam, who was being nosy for a great reason, runs to her and said, Oh my God, do I need to get one of the Hebrew women to nurse this baby? God always is providing for his children. God is always listening to the cries of the parent. What you mean? I don't believe that woman took, set sail her son just to say forget about him. I believe when she set sail, I believe she cried. I believe she said, Lord, protect my baby. I believe she was saying, Lord, you only you know. Lord, you know this is hurting me, but then God already had it in his plans that the baby was going to be back with her anyway. And so the text tells us that Mary says, shall I call on one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child? I already know it. That's her brother. And God, what God does is he places it on the heart of Pharaoh's daughter to tell her yes. But not only did she say yes, <laughs> it's about to bless you. She said, not only did I say yes, but I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay you to take care of this baby. Not knowing that the same person that kicked the baby out is the, is the mother, the same person who you finna pay was the person who sent him out to sell. What you mean? Sometimes God can turn something that looks bad into 
a blessing. What you mean? At first, it looked bad because she was going to be without her baby. But not only now is she going to be with her baby, but she's going to get paid for taking care of her own baby. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. She went against society because she first, she was supposed to kill her baby. She was supposed to kill her baby because in that society, they didn't want these young Hebrew boys growing up, having more children, spreading their seeds, and bringing up a nation that would be bigger than us. And so she broke societal law to, 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 to obey the law of God, and God rewarded her for her sacrifice. And that's a word right there to the mothers. God will reward you for your sacrifice, but you have to choose God's way over society's way. Yeah. And so, Bible tells us that this child goes to his mother at three months old. This baby is three months old. And so, the mother is still able to nurse her child. Yeah. Is still able to hold her child. But now, this is going to bless you. She don't hold him under duress anymore. What you mean duress? Go back to the beginning. She had to hide him because the king wanted them dead. And so in her holding him, I only can believe she had to hold him in fear. She had to hold him scared. She had to hold him hit and tucked off. And I am hoping nobody sees her and they take her child and kill her. And so now her circumstances changes in a matter of hours. No longer does she have to hold her child. She has to hold her child in fear. She gets to hold her child in faith. Because now she sees how obeying the Lord will pay off for her. And that's the mighty word. Pay, obeying the Lord will pay off. That's why mothers now on Mother's Day when their children come by and say, Mama, I thank you. Mama, I love you. Mama, I appreciate you. That's the Lord reward you for your sacrifice and obedience. When they come every so often and try to cut the grass and tear your house up. That's them saying, Mama, I appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> so, the text, the Bible says, that the baby grew up as a child of Pharaoh. He grows up as a child of Pharaoh. And I want y'all to understand this. Growing up as a child of Pharaoh, he was taught the paganistic lifestyle. He was taught to obey and worship our idol gods. That's what happens when we don't do what we have to do for our children. That's what happens when we don't train our children. That's what happens when we don't teach our children is that they will be influenced by whatever that is being publicized or whatever that's being promoted. But the Bible tells us that, that his mom, Jacobin, basically raised his child every day until he became a man. And so even though he was brought up as a child of Pharaoh's daughter, the mama still had her hands on her son. And even though he was being taught what society in the world wanted, I believe in my sanctified imagination, she was sitting there telling him, boy, I know they teach an evolution, but we didn't come from no monkeys. I know your school system is telling you that this is the way things should be, but the Bible don't tell us that. I know they say, you can say yes, but you gonna say yes now. I know they telling you you came from this, but you came from God. I know they say man came from a monkey, but the Bible says God formed man out of the dust of the ground. What you said, I know the society and the school system have one way they did teach it, but your responsibility as a parent is to make sure you tell them what God says the Lord, what the Lord requires you, and what is right and what is wrong. Society says it's okay to be in a same-sex relationship but God says differently. Society says it's okay to take care of yourself. You don't have to respect what the Bible says. Honor thy father and thy mother. We have to tell our children. We have to let them know. I don't care what society says. I serve a God who's bigger than whatever any president of Pharaoh says. How do you know? Because after four years, the president term is over with. But my God is forever on the throne. 
And so in the end, in Hebrew, in my closing, the Bible says that when, when Moses got older, because of the love of his mother, when Moses, Moses got older, he had a choice to make. Yeah. Every child, every adult, if we look back over our lives, when we became an adult, we got a choice to make. Right. And Moses' choice was, should I do what society expects of me, what society says to do, or should I do what I know is right in the eyes of the Lord? Even though Moses was taught through all the ways of the Egyptians according to Hebrews and, and Hebrews 11 and 23 and Acts 6 and 20, 7 and 20, the Bible says that once he came to himself because of the real love his mother showed him, because she taught him what he needed to learn, he understood and realized that even though society has its views, I'm not going to take the, uh, the rules of society. The Bible says that when he saw his fellow Hebrew get beat up by the Egyptian, he decided at that moment, you know what, I'm going to stand for what I know is right. I'm going to stand for God. And if I'm going to stand for God, then I understand in standing from God that I'm going to lose my plus position. Moses was brought up as a child of Pharaoh. He would have been next in line to inherit the kingdom. But he understood and remember what his mother told him. And in my closes, we make that decision. We got to remember what we are taught. Train up a child in the way that he should go that when he get older that he won't depart from it. Most of y'all, if y'all like me, when you got grown, I went out there in the streets, I clubbed and partied, I smoked my weed and drunk my alcohol. I did all, but at the same time, while I was doing all of that, the teachings kept ringing in the back of my head. He never says you won't stray, but the Bible does say that it won't depart from you. You will stray sometimes. You, but even in your straying, you go remember what you were taught. And every now and then, the Lord would bring something to your remembrance. I can remember getting high with one of my friends. He looked at me and said, you don't need to be doing this. I had to tell him to shut up. Boy, pass the weed. Not realizing that was the Lord saying, you don't belong here. Remember what you were taught. In my closing, we won't have that memory unless our parents do their part. Bring us to church. Teach us. Don't spare the rod. Make sure that they're showing you how you should act, how you should conduct through yourself. And when you get to that place, Moses left. And before Moses became this mighty man of God, he had to go to Jethro's house. He didn't always walk in the position as the savior of Egypt. But when it came to him, I believe on that burning bush, he remembered. Yeah. He remembered what mama taught him. Y'all for my mother's day speak, this is real love. Chaka Bear knew how to protect her child by hiding him from the expectations of society. She knew that it was a point that she would have to give him up to the Lord. She knew he, she, he had to let him go and trust that the Lord would protect him. And then all that, even as he is on his own with, you see that he still needs that parental advice. Y'all, I have grown, I have a grown son and even now, you can see the mother's love that she still is telling me certain things that I need. No, it ain't that she's keeping me as a child, but what she's saying is, I'm going to always be there in the maturation of this person because we're constantly growing. And I can encourage not just the mothers, but even the fathers who dad their children lie. Y'all, this was a tribute to the mothers.
that we look at Jochebed's life, she wasn't a major character in the Bible. But she gives us some nuggets. She shows us what real love is. Is a person that would sacrifice all for the well-being of her child. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for this example of showing us what real love is, God. Father, we bless and we thank you because you are great. Because, God, you exemplify that by sacrificing your life for us. Dying on the cross so that we may live. And on this Mother's Day, God, we appreciate our mothers for sacrificing so that we may live and know what love is. God, I ask you, God, to bless the mothers every way. Father, we lift you up on this morning and we thank you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray and we say amen. amen. And praise God. Amen. We're going to have Pastor Chris to come up with an announcement. We ask you all to receive her as she comes. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Reed, for reminding us of the strength and the responsibility of our mothers. Before I go into the announcements, I do want to make sure that we don't let this moment pass us by. There may be someone that may have been viewing or that may be here that has yet to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And so I want to take this opportunity to extend an invitation for you to receive one who has already stood with his arms wide open to receive you. Will you make this decision today? The one who has kept you even when everyone else has forsaken you. The one who has stood by your side. Jesus who is the Christ. The one who promises to love you unconditionally with all your faults, failures, setbacks. The Bible reminds us that while we were yet sinners, he chose to die. So if he can die while you were in the midst of your sin to show you how much he loves you, he will still embrace you even while you are trying to get it together. He will help make it over. The Bible also reminds us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old is passed away. Behold, all things become new. So we invite you to enter into a relationship with our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that he is God, he died, that he rose from the grave, that the Bible says you shall be saved. That's a guarantee. He guarantees it. And we know that we can take the Lord God at his word. He desires that no man should perish, but they become the fullness to understand him. Will you accept them today? If that is you, we invite you just to say, Lord, I receive you. Submit that in the chat. Lord, I receive you. And if you are already a believer, but you desire to be a part of a family that's seeking to grow bigger in Christ, who is walking and teaching the word of God. Encouragement Temple is a, a wonderful place for you to be at where we are all seeking to grow in the knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ. We're growing all together. We invite you to join us if that is you. Yes. But if you are growing already where you're going and you just happen in to see Encouragement, Encouragement Temple every once in a while, we thank you and ask for your continued support of the ministry as we do what God has called us to do on this side of the North Houston area. Thank you so much, Pastor Reed, again for uh, serenading and uh, having a special word of a love of a mother to their child. Amen. Again, on this Mother's Day, we thank God for everyone that is here. just want to share a few announcements. I just want to remind you all that we are still making disciples. Yes. We're still making disciples. And so, our Bible study series has been on discipleship one-on-one, spending time with the master. And now we're in getting in the word, living in the word. So we're going to explore the disciples' cross and what that looks like. So we hope that you will join us 
even this Wednesday at 7 o'clock to you join us here at 4714 FM 1960 West, Suite 103, Houston, Texas, 77069. Or you may join us for worship uh, uh, right now. We have relaxed the mandate for mass. We are strongly encouraging them, though. Uh, so we want to put the onus on every uh, individual that is here that if you decide to wear a mask, then the onus is on you. We strongly recommend that. I believe that is the announcements as of right now. We thank uh, God for Brother Dennis, who is here with us as well, who has joined us today just to sit in and see what we are about. And we, we hope that the Lord has uh, spoken to your heart and will guide you accordingly. Uh, did you want to have any, any words or anything? No, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, look, before we move forward, I do want to still, it just in this moment, I just want to, uh, in a uh, just a little preliminary, just let you know what we are all about. We say it usually at the end, but I want to let you know what Encouragement Temple all, is all about, what our mission and our motto is. The Encouragement Temple will be the place, it is the place where Christ is edified through our worship and our witness, where believers are empowered through the preached gospel and discipleship, and where the community is enlightened on God's saving grace to all. So that is what Encouragement Temple is all about. Uh, as we are moving forward in our announcements, I do want to let you all know that there's a way for you all to still worship the Lord. And that's by way of giving. We ought not to come to the Lord with that that costs us nothing. But if we are seeking to grow in our Lord, if we're wanting to support the efforts in which he is uh, seeking to move forward and show himself in the community, we ask that you would join us in sowing into Encouragement Temple. Both the tithe and the offering is what the Lord is asking of us. He's required the tithe, and so we ask that you would go above that, not to tip God, but to just show him how much you truly, truly love him. I've said this before, you know, when you go to restaurants, they make, they kind of make you sometimes give more than 10%. They, they tell you, you're going to give 20%, 25 And sometimes if you have a party bigger than eight, they're going to put it already in your total. They're going to make sure that you, they're going to make sure you give. So we know that our Lord has been gracious to us. Everything may not have been where we want it to be, but like I said, those restaurants, your food will be bad and they still make you tip. So, um, we, we just, <laughs> all right, all right. And, and service may be horrible, but you still be required to tip. And so um, we ask that you would just show the Lord that you love him by way of that. Give me just a second. That you would just show him that you love him uh, through your giving. I'm going to have uh, Brother Evan. He's going to help with uh, the giving. We also have electronic means for you to give, Cash App and PayPal. For our virtual viewers, that information is made available for you at the bottom of the screen. Please take advantage of that and be generous in your giving in that way. Again, we want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers as well. We have a few more things that we're going to do before we give a blessing and benediction. Uh, we have a, a lot of things that we want to share with our mothers as well. But for right now, we're going to hear some music, and then we're going to allow uh, Brother Evan to come around to collect uh, the offering uh, for us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless it once it once. We have to be flexible. <laughs> and Brother Evan, when you finish, just come up here with me. Brother Evan? Evan. Come up here so we can pray over the altar. I just, I just love our people here. We're going to just pray over the altar. Lord God, we thank you that every good and perfect gift comes from you, Father. You already know what we need even before we got need of it. And you're always providing for us. So thank you for being our great, our great provider, oh God. Father, we pray that you would bless the hands that were able to give today. Father, we pray that you would return back unto them according to their seed. And even go overflow for them, oh God. Give them more, Father, so that they can see and realize that you see their heart and you see their generosity in their giving. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. That you own everything. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So, Father, whatever we have need of, we know that your hand will provide because you continue to be faithful to us. Lord, we bless your name and we thank you, even now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, no, I, I, I forgot. <laughs> Oh my, this, talk about the love of children. You have to love them even as they seek to lead. Even as they seek to lead. Oh, Evan Reed. He excited my 
got either excited about Mother's Day. My son almost just blew everything for me. Just like, Dad, did you get? Uh, okay, okay. Um, now we're gonna have something else that's gonna happen. So you all know for our virtual viewers and some of the, those of you that are here even right now, you may have been aware of uh, the fact that we we <laughs> that we have what's called a. Um, our annual Encourage Her Raffle. Every you know, every year, especially uh, at the start of the pandemic, we started to we wanted to do something nice for the mothers uh, that were not necessarily able to be here with us. And so what we did was we started our uh, Mother's Day raffle where a winner will receive a one hundred dollar Visa gift card. And so we want to make sure that we're still faithful to that and we continue to do this on an annual basis, encouraging the mothers, encouraging the community, and even establishing partnerships with others. So. Right now, what we're going to do is I have Evan here. We have in this plat in this platform. Hold on, I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you go. Go this way real quick. Uh, so in this cup, he's excited, y'all. I'm glad that he's excited to be involved uh, in, in church activity. Uh, so we have this cup here with names that have been. I make sure they fold it up so he don't pick the people that he wants. Right. Uh, <laughs> The names of persons who have responded to the post. So we had a post on Facebook and on Instagram, and Pastor Reed did live uh, uh, broadcast saying, hey, if you want to be entered into this raffle, you need to type in Encourage Her 2022 in the comments. And so people have answered it. So right now we are going to do the live drawing that we promised would happen. So, okay, hold on. so what, I, what I need you to do is just, I'm just going to shake it like this. I'm going to shake it. I'm going to shake it. And then what I'm going to have you do is just stick your hand in there yeah, and pull only one. Because we only guarantee you one. So I need you to pull one, okay? Are you ready? Pull one. Don't even look inside. Just stick your hand in there. And just pick one. Okay. We have one. The winner is Anisha Joseph. Oh, she watching all right. Anisha Joseph, you are the winner. Oh, the $100 Visa gift card. <laughs> yeah, she's not even. <laughs> That's what he calls her. But Anisha Joseph, you entered wow. and you are now the recipient of a $100 Visa gift card. We will be connecting with you so we can make sure that you get that. I don't know about you all, but I don't know any mother who would not like an extra $100 in their pocket. I'm just saying. So uh, we, we thank God that you continue to support Encouragement Temple. And yeah, even in God. this, you see how the Lord continues to give back even as you give. And so we thank God that you continue to support Encouragement Temple. Anisha Joseph, we will be connecting with you uh, in that regard. And we'll continue to also pray for you and your family as well. Uh, Pastor Reed, did I leave anything else out? Were you trying to do anything special? Okay, so I'm going to give you over to Pastor Reed. He's going to come up and do something that I don't know about. So I'm going to ask that you would receive him back uh, as we continue to move forward in this Mother's Day service. Okay, before we move forward, um, so next month, we, we're going to start this now. We're doing the raffle for Father's Day. What we've been doing is doing the Father's Day raffle for $50. You know what I mean? We don't get as much as the mothers. <laughs> but, we don't, but something is better than, than nothing. So, if you want to be a part of this Father's Day raffle, uh, those of you watching online, we ask you to just put in a comment, encourage him. Not her, but what was it? Encourage him 2022. Encourage, encourage him 2022, and we will enter you into the Father's Day raffle that will be done next month on Father's Day. Okay. And so, leave a message. Note, if you don't have Facebook or Instagram, uh, again, you can email us. And, and tell us, encourage in 2022, and we'll submit your name into the Father's Day raffle. And so, Evan, today is Mother's Day. I need you to do what I told you, get the two, the two small ones first. So we, Encouragement Temple, we wanted to, we want to bless our mothers. Uh, so I didn't do, I didn't, we didn't do uh, flowers this year. We didn't do a bunch of, so what we done was, we decided to give the mothers something that's sweet and also healthy. He don't be right. He don't be right. Get the other one, Evan. You don't want to get him. Yeah, I gave him instructions. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't follow the instructions. He didn't, he didn't follow the instructions. 
And so for the mothers, we want to tell y'all happy Mother's Day again. Uh, sweet and healthy at the same time. And so um, we hope y'all enjoy these chocolate-covered strawberries. Don't share them with nobody else. Those are for you all. Eat them. Enjoy them. Don't let them melt. <laughs> I think it's better than having stickers and everything else. And so, y'all, we thank God for you. That's my co-worker, you guys. We thank God for him coming. Man of his word. You know, you know, people tell you, but then you be like, oh, they ain't coming. But he called this morning to make sure he was coming to the right place. Then as I thank you, man, I thank you. And don't come talking about me at work tomorrow. We thank God for his presence. Uh, there's not anything else to say. We ask everybody to stand as we dismiss. Amen. To the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to the only wise God, be glory, honor, dominion, and power. Repeat after me. May the Lord walk between me and thee while we're absent, one from another. Jesus name, we'll see y'all this Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we continue our series on the disciples' cross. We see you then. Until then, we want you all to be 